What's up guys? Welcome to Black Ruby. I'm here with Dembe and you're here for another interview. Nowadays, <laughs> all right. Tell my nigga he <laughs> when did you start rapping? I started making music when I was in third grade. Um, my pops wrote my first rap for a talent show. Go by the name Little Squirt. I got my name printed on the back of my shirt. And when hey. these girls see me, man, hey. they start to flirt. Bodyguards hey. all around me, so I won't get hurt. Ooh, okay. I'm the number one fan of the LA Lakers. Something, something Harlem Shaker. Oh, you remember that from third grade? So like from third grade to now, like how did when did you start like writing your own raps and developing your craft? Uh, in middle school, me and Lil Frey was doing this little rap thing when we was in like fifth or sixth grade, and we started we performing at a dance in middle school, and we kept making music and doing like design and stuff and everything. And then I started taking. Then we got to Nolly Gang. We had a group called Nolly Gang when we was in high school. It was real lit. <laughs> But um, and after that, we kind of slowed down with the music and everything, and then I came back. Mm, so what made you come back to music? While I was away, I always listened to music and kept writing music. I just never recorded and never, you know, kept working and, you know, getting my name out there. And then when I came back, I was, I was done with school and everything and, and wanted to go back to music. So what inspired nowadays? Like, what do you mean, like the song? Yeah, like the song, yeah. All right, so when I wrote Wonderland, it was, I think I, I didn't have a job, and I was just, I just got out of school, and I was back at home at my mama's house, and just writing back to back to back, and just, you know, drink, uh, all that, and just kept writing, writing, listening to music all day, and then play some 2K, and then get back to music. So, I mean, when I was writing those songs, I was, all that, all that was just in the moment, and at the time, I had a, uh, the night I wrote that song, one of my best friends like, got locked up that same night. How did that take an emotional toll on you? Me and him was just hanging out and, you know, chilling with my other friend. He, my friend called me and was telling me, hey, man, he just got locked up. And I was just already listening to the beat and couldn't think of something. And I, then as soon as he called me, I thought of, like, nowadays. So why did you write, say, stop, talk some of your lyrics of nowadays and explain lyric for lyric why you wrote those lyrics. Um... So what's the first verse of nowadays? Can I say the ex explicit words? Uh, yeah, you can say the explicit words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, tell my nigga he can call me if he needs some. Now he only calling when he needs some. Mm. I wrote that because, um, you know, I had a... I, don't, I can't. Some of the stuff I can't really say. <laughs> I can't put it out there. So like pretty that. much, you had a you had an associate at the time, who he be, he was your close friend at one point, but then he became like a user at the second, like he, that he got the chance to do that. Seeing that you were vulnerable enough to give him what he needed, now it's like okay, I want this, I want that, in a way. Yeah, like me and him was real cool, and it got to the point where I, he wasn't around. I don't want to be like that on camera though. Yeah, I feel you. You don't want to be like that person, but I mean, it's the truth. Like, sometimes people fade away. Yeah, sometimes so people separate. Let me start back. Let me start back <laughs> from the lyrics. Um, so you want me to perform the lyrics? No, you don't have to perform it. Right. You can just break the lyrics down in so, the song. So what's the next, um, what's, uh, he needs something now. What's after that? Um, hit them numbers like a triple-double. I done came up on some cash, now she swear she love me. Mm. You know, you know that feeling, you know. <laughs> like everybody know that feeling. Everybody come up a little bit and they start seeing, like, you know, a little different things around you. I put myself in a world called Wonderland, right? I get I get in my own world and I, and I just express myself. Mm. So when I write, every, everything I'm saying is either how I feel people around me feel or somebody a situation I don't been through or I know a situation I help somebody else get through describe your wonderland 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 is a place where anybody can go and be free and live their life if you like think about wonderland in a setting like what would wonderland look like and feel like a whole lot of land and <laughs> Man, y'all. <laughs> a whole lot of. <laughs> Damn. Okay, land of what, right. dude? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, wait. All right, so. When I picture. Damn. Ask me the question. What, what does Wonderland look like? What's, if you could draw a picture of Wonderland, what would it, what would be in the picture? 
all my family and friends feeling good and financially fuck. Yeah. Damn, you good at answering that question. <laughs> just be your, like, just say how you feel in your mind. There's no wrong answer all right. at all. Cause you know, I say stupid stuff. It's okay. Just be, be yourself. Yeah. It's it's for right. your fans to see like how you are <laughs> as a person. <laughs> For real, man. Okay, go ahead. Be yourself. Like, you say something dumb, just say it. Whatever. Just own it. Like, it is what it is. People will like you because you're yourself. People don't not like Baby's rude. You know, Maybe. like, Migos is Jack. funny. Like, Offset is hilarious. Shoot. Take off. Don't talk. People just like them for who they are. So just be yourself. Speaking of fans, like, what are some of the things that you want your fans to know about you as a person? Not just as an artist. That. God dang. You should give me a study guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I want my fans to know about me that I am really a regular person, and I love music, and I love having fun, and I love art. Oh, you're going on tour soon, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So tell me about the tour. Like, how did you get into the tour life? Uh, my manager Ash. She, so she hooked up with this dude up in uh, Atlanta, named Mr. Joseph. He's real cool. And he hooked me up with some like uh, opening gigs across the states for right now. So. That's gonna be fun. Like I told you earlier, I only been on the plane once, and that was like last month. So I'm ready for it. You went, went where did you go on your plane ride? New Orleans. Oh, okay. Yeah, see my bros. One of my um, roommates from college got married. Mm. Shout out to my boy Nick. <laughs> so like, have you? Do you have like any features on Wonderland? Yeah, I got Lafrey. He made the shirt. Oh, that's dope. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we got LaFrey, he on uh, Wonderland, uh, Nappy, Nappy D, he on there, uh, D Camp, my little bro, my little brother, um, Jam Ski on there. I feel like it's so much people, but it's just the same people always been on my songs. I mean, but I'm willing to, I'm willing to, you know, network and get one of the new artists and everything. So when you like when you're putting the song together, like who like who's are some of the producers that you work with, and like what do you feel like your vibe is? Like what do you feel like your tone is? Like you know how people have like reggae, hip hop. Like what category do you fit in? Just urban hip hop, I guess. Like it's a little, it's a little kind of saucy, but it's more a little conscious too, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess I think that's how I look at it. But, look, but you know, that's how I look at it. Who do you look up to, like, as other artists? Like, who do you follow? J. Cole, Jermaine Cole, uh, Kendrick Lamar. Um, artists. I listen to Outkast, Lauryn Hill, uh, Erica Badu. Who else I listen to? Um, Naughty by Nature. Uh, it's a lot. Diggable Planets. Um, I listen to Bob Marley. A lot. Uh, it's another group that's not hip hop called Foster People and MGMT. I listen to them a lot too. 90s influence the way I live, to be honest, because everybody always say that's the better time. I'm not trying to live in the past, but I'm trying to keep what what the I'm good trying times to rolling. yeah I'm trying to yeah keep the, the good time and the good vibes from the 90s rolling. That's that's all. And you know, people trying to like I don't, I don't knock nobody for wearing you know the expensive clothes because I mean if I if I had it. I, I wear it here and there, but I said, but I, I, I wear with what I got, and um, I mean, the, not, they, what, that back then in the 90s, everybody worked with what they had, and they, I mean, people had flashy stuff, but at the same time, everything was original, you know, and that's what I like about it, be original, everybody was themselves. So what would you tell, like, a young person out there that's, like, want to do music, but they're scared to do music? Don't be scared. That's why, when I first with me, I mean, I, me, like I don't bring his name up about three times. Lafrey, me and Lafrey, we had shows with a disc scratch. And we nobody, we couldn't catch back up with the music. We had shows where the uh, the boombox kicked out, and we had no music. Like every, I mean, it's bad. Like every, it's a lot of bad things that come with it. But if you keep moving and maneuvering, I mean, you find a way. And I mean, if, and if you're serious and you and you know that's what you want, go get it. You know, like you, I mean, we, we, what we have, we work. Well, when we started out, we didn't have nobody to tell us do this and do that and do that. But I feel like somebody who really want to do it, they should get out there and ask people who know what they're doing and who high up and get to where they're at and keep moving, you know? 
That's why I'm trying to do it, you know? Yeah. And so, um, when you like started like performing and stuff like that, like in front of audiences, like and now, have you seen like your audience change over time? Like get bigger and bigger, or, like you know the demographics change or anything? Yeah, I mean we first started, we first started, man. Like another off school. My first performance, I went up there nervous. Went to uh, Columbia. I'm from Charleston. Uh, everybody looking at us, they don't know us. We went up there. music you think everything good came back home the car broke down we had to push it down the interstate walk all the way to the next exit uh get gas come back you think like what what am i doing you know yeah push you had to get an uber back to the car finally got the gas in the car came back go to work in the next I, that's this was all happened at three in the morning had to go to work six a.m i mean so if you really want it you gotta get up and get it I mean, but that, at the same time, bad things come. And I'm, now I'm starting to see, like, when I go to shows, more people there to support, and they know the words, and uh, friends came. Like, I remember one trip we took to Onyx, man. I, this my, I never been on strip club. No, first time in the strip club. <laughs> lost all my money, God. <laughs> but um, we went up in there, we had fun. You know, I was with my friends, we went on stage, we won, got paid, went back home, split, split the dividends. That's how it worked. So you're seeing yourself grow, like finally, like you're, you're, you like you can feel like it coming. Yeah. You feel that? I can see it change coming. Yeah. I got a new, a new little thing coming out. <laughs> That's about all that too. It's about being on the road, about seeing the change coming, bettering yourself. It's called save my soul. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so as you see the change coming like even, even though it's hard moments like what made you continue to go like how, what did you say to yourself to like not give up I got a lot of good support around me uh, there's times when I feel like real you know in that place where people feel like well they don't they want to give up but I got people around me I can call on It'll be like, you know, they're here, they do, they're going through the same thing, everybody going through something. So, people support me, tell me to keep going, then I had a daughter, shit. I looked in her eyes, I couldn't stop. So now, pushing. So, you know, so what are some of the next shows that you have coming up, um, if you have any coming up? Next shows? Mm -hmm. The next one, what's the date? I can't remember the date, the next one is in Jacksonville, Florida. The one after that is in, um, the one after that, I can't remember. Oh, somewhere in Louisiana, and then the last one is in Alaska. Dang, Alaska. That's the first three. Dang. But so after that, it keeps. It has, it's like fifty of them. Jeez. Mm. So you went from going to shows and people barely knowing who you are, and now you're going on a tour that's taking you to Alaska. How does that feel? Cold. <laughs> Not just like, I just like, <laughs> I just play, I just play. And it, it feel good, it feel like it's a progress, you know, it feel like I'm making uh, progress and stuff happening, but it's not like the way people want it to happen. Mm -hmm. But it's the way I, I feel like I'm grinding for it. It's not wake up in the morning and you rich kind of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. It does not happen overnight. It's Never. So, um, is there, before we go, is there anything that you'd like to say? Um, any any projects that you have coming out now? I know Wonderland just came out. Yeah. But anything that you're looking, uh, you know, to shoot or that people should anticipate? Um, yeah, we just had Nowadays come out. Um, we got Holy Girl coming out next. We're working on that right now. And then after that, Save My Soul, the album is dropping. Ooh, okay. Have you had any, like, major, uh, you know, come, are, you, are you are you looking to go major? Would you go mainstream? Like what, like uh, RCA or like Interscope or something like that? Yeah, yes. Okay. Dreamville put me on. They just dropped their things July 5th, Friday, this past Friday. They just dropped their album bumping that all day. <laughs> I got to get on that, but yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. I think they drop a documentary too. I, I saw yeah, it yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, look at I'm that. all on it. <laughs> Word. Dreamville. So, um, See, I mean, Dreamville, we can bring back so so death. Mm, we, can, that'd be dope. we can bring back we can bring back um what's that um DTP? 
little Chris. Huh, disturbing the peace mm -hmm. and bring them back. Somebody, somebody signed me. I'm free agent. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Right, he's scoring. Yeah. Visuals out there. Yeah, right? yeah. All right. Well, we coming. It's Black Ruby. <laughs> it's Black Ruby, and we're sitting here with Dembe. Um, and this is our interview. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and follow him on his social medias. What are they? Uh, all my social medias are at Lean Boy Wonder. L-E-A-N-B-O-Y-W-O-N-D-E-R. Mm. All right, look out for his uh, next drop, Holy Girl, and get uh, Wonderland right now. It's screaming on all platforms. And get that, guys. Thanks now for checking out. Told my nigga he can call me if he needs some. Need now he only calling when he needs some. Need Hitting them numbers like a triple-double. Yeah. I, I done came up on some cash, now she swear she love me.